Hello, Lauren here with Lauren Elizabeth Animal Art, and I help beginner through professional level artists reduce stress while mastering animal art. Well, we just invited baby Zachary into this world on June 9th, and it's been a little busy around here, but I'm very excited for us to paint together again. We're going to be painting a little kitten named Blondie, the first piece of a cat painting series that I've been working on called Rest Like a Cat. Now for this tutorial, there is a traceable printout and a list of materials down below. But guys, without further ado, let's get started. All right, so by now you should have your traceable printout transferred onto your canvas. I'm using an eight by 10 canvas and a large flat brush. And we're gonna work on our background first. I'm using sky blue and lots of white. That's just a little bit of sky blue and lots of white. I'm working behind the kitten and the basket and above the table. I wanna keep the top of my canvas in the background more white at the top. And then as I move down, it's gonna be a little bit more of a deeper blue with more sky blue in there. Now, as you're painting your background, it's better to go almost over top your sketch than not close enough and have little white spots later to paint in. So it's okay if you go over your sketch a little. Don't worry so much. We're just warming up right now. And as we paint together, I invite you to take five deep breaths to turn off the noise in your head, to turn on your creativity, and just to wipe away all the expectations you have for this painting to be perfect or exactly like mine because it's not, it's gonna look very different and that's a good thing. Now it's time to work on the table. I'm gonna wash up my brush that I was just using. I'm gonna use the same large flat brush just to get in around that basket. I'm gonna make sure it's clean and damp. And I'm gonna use black and raw sienna. That's black and raw sienna, just a little bit of black. Now by looking at this reference photo, we can tell that the light is coming from all around this kitten but I really want to create depth and contrast in my painting. So I'm going to choose predominantly the back left of the kitty so that we have a lot of light hitting behind the kitten and on the left side of the table. Therefore, that would create a shadow coming from the basket hitting the table in the lower right hand corner right here where I've added more black and less raw sienna. Now on the left side, I'm going to add less black and more raw sienna and even a little bit of white. I'm gonna lighten that left side up more 
to stay consistent with the light source. We can also add a little bit more of a light brown to this upper part that I haven't painted yet on the right side of the table. What I'm also trying to do is not make this table look perfectly polished and blended. This is a very weathered table, and so I'm not trying to make the right side the same color and the left side one color. I'm just kind of letting the paint do its thing. I'm working wet into wet, being intentional about having the different variations of these two colors on this area of my painting, not trying to make it look so sleek and smooth. So with raw sienna and white, I'm going to start adding those highlights that I was talking about on the left side. I'm going to be blending that in straight on my canvas, wet into wet, so that the outer edge of the table is light and becomes darker, especially towards the bottom right. Now I'm not done with this color yet because I actually want to add just a little bit of it, this light brown, to the top of the other side of the table. It's still getting some of that light on the outer rim. Now as you're painting your background, it's important that you don't forget about your sides. It's really annoying to have to go back later remix these colors and paint the sides. So save yourself some time. Now looking at my table, I want it to look rustic and weathered, but I don't really want those circular brush strokes. So a little technique we can use to smooth this out is by washing out our brush so it's got no paint on it, just water, dabbing it on our cloth, and just smoothing that out on our canvas with the wet paint. This is really hard to do when the paint is sticky and tacky and impossible to do if it's dry, but if it's still damp and wet, you can easily still blend it with that damp brush. Next, we're going to apply a base to the basket. We're going to use burnt sienna this time and black instead of raw sienna and black. So this will be able to see over top that table. So that's black and burnt sienna and just the top part of the basket. So underneath the kitten's paws and then down just around this upside down cone, not the very bottom part. I won't be painting that. But in this area, I'll just fill it in with my large flat brush. Now, if you'd like to learn how to draw and paint your own cat or dog or other wildlife, I've created the online animal art masterclass for creatives of all levels, ages 15 and up, where I help creatives reduce stress, anxiety, depression, while mastering animal art. 
It was about five years ago that I discovered Anim Art Therapy and it helped me recover from addiction, anxiety, and depression. And it's something that I still use to help me manage stress. Each real-time tutorial comes with class notes, a list of materials, a reference photo, drawing instructions, and or a traceable printout in case you're not fond of drawing. So if this online class would bless you or a friend, you can give it a try, 10% off for your first month. All those links are down below. Now let's get back to our kitten painting. Now we'll be working on the bottom base of this basket and I'll be using a small flat brush for this. We're going to use burnt sienna and black but a lot less black this time. It's going to be a lot more burnt sienna but eventually we'll be adding in more black to get those darker edges at the bottom. So first just apply this color and then facing the darker area, remember we talked about the shadow on the lower right side. It's gonna get a bit darker there, so we'll add more black. Now my goal is to make the basket and the table all weathered looking and rustic. So here I'm gonna add in a little bit of black, just going down that line, that edge, and then also filling that section in. I'll also use this color to fill in the bottom of the base. And if you look very closely on the top of these areas that I have white here, there is just highlights on the line on the top of them. So again, I'm adding in more black. I'm gonna fill in those little pieces at the bottom of the base. I'm also gonna make sure the middle of these two sections above this area has this darkness. And then I'm gonna go in with just burnt sienna and outline those little edges that are kind of been sanded down and weathered looking. This is gonna give that old antique worn down look.
All right, so now it's time to pull out your very thin rigger brush. We need one real thin and small here because we're working in such a tiny area. And just with black, we're gonna be outlining the eyes, filling in the pupils, outlining the nose, the bottom of it, and filling in those tiny little nostrils. Take your time here and make sure you have a really thin, bristled rigger brush. This is just a really nice brush to help you get those tiny little details. I also want to mention that we will use this brush and this color, black, to simply outline the mouth. We don't have to go all around the mouth, like on the sides, just around the bottom. Next, we're going to add color to the eyes. Now, just my artist style, I like to do this a lot in my pet portraits. I like to add two different colored eyes. I like to have one eye color being a bit darker, the other one being a bit lighter. For this portrait, I'm going to use white and violet to create a dark to medium violet, and I'm just going to fill in the white of the left eye. Now for the right eye, we're going to use the colors yellow ochre, cadmium yellow, and burnt sienna. Just a little bit burnt sienna. That's cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, and a little bit of burnt sienna. And we'll use this to fill in the white of the right eye. Next, what I'm going to do using burnt sienna with a tiny bit of black, basically using what we used for the table. I still have a little bit mixed up on my paint palette. I'm just going to take a little bit of this and there's a shadow being created on the top of the eye. Oftentimes cats have this real thick outline around their eye as well as a pretty thick shadow on the top. 
we have the same shadow on the left eye, which is why I'm going to go in with violet, just violet. And it's actually a bit darker because we're getting a little bit less light on that left side because the light's hitting behind the kitty. We also have a very strong shadow on the innermost part of the eye closest to the bridge of the nose. Now what I'm doing with black is just touching up the outline and the pupil that we filled in at the very beginning. We still want to see that dark outline and the pupil. So we want to make sure that that is darker than the colors that we've added to the eyes. Now we're not done yet with the eyes. We're actually going to mix cadmium yellow with yellow ochre and just lighten up the right eye. That's where we're getting that highlight. If you notice, there's that little white highlight on the right eye. So I'm just going to lighten that up with cadmium yellow and yellow ochre. Now we're not entirely done with the eyes. Later when those are dry, we'll go on with that white highlight. So now it's time to work on the nose. I'm going to mix up permanent red, raw sienna, and white. That's permanent red, raw sienna, and white. Still using my detail brush, I'm gonna fill in the nose, and then I'm gonna lighten up the right side. It's just slightly lighter than the left side of the nose. So I'm gonna go in with just a little bit more white. Now what I like to do, if I'm on a color that I can place in other parts of the painting, I'll jump right to that. And an area that is very similar to this nose color is the inner ears. We're going to use the same colors except we're going to add in cadmium yellow. So that's permanent red, raw sienna, white, and some cadmium yellow. You'll see that I add that in a little bit because it just needs a little bit of orange. It's definitely a brighter orange red compared to the nose. Now we're working with a little bit larger area here, so you don't have to use your liner brush or your small round detail brush. You can use a little bit bigger one, either a small flat brush or a little bit bigger round brush like I'm using. And we just want to fill in both ears. Now I'll tell you, we kind of want to work a little fast here because we're going to be working wet into wet again, adding in our darker shadows, the very inner part of the ear at the bottom here. So next I'm going to mix up some leftover burnt sienna and black. And I'm just going to work that wet into wet at the very bottom where we see those real dark shadows in the inner ear. Okay, so now I'm going to wash up my brush entirely, go back to that orange reddish color, just going to mix up some more of it. I'm going to fill in that right ear, and then again, just like we did the left ear, going to darken up the lower part at the inner ear. All right, so again, just like our left ear, we're gonna mix up burnt sienna and black and just pull that in while the paint is still wet and mix that right on our canvas for the inner ear. Now a little tiny spot that I noticed that we can go in with burnt sienna and black just for the basket is right in between those paws. Just with a little bit of paint that's burnt sienna and black, I'm just going to fill in the very, very top of that basket in between the paws. It's just ever so tiny. Now 
Next, we're gonna work on Blondie the Kitten. I'm using a small flat brush for this part, and we're gonna mix up yellow ochre, raw sienna, and white. That's yellow ochre, raw sienna, and white. And we're gonna lay down the darkest values, a lot of those tabby stripes, and the dark shadows in the cat first, and then we're gonna build up color from dark to light. Now you might wanna watch me before giving a try yourself just as to where I place these stripes and just the shadows. Because while I place down this color and just lay them down, I'm also cutting in with that flat edge of my flat brush to create that fur. I just did that over the inner ear. Now don't overthink this step too much. It's a lot easier than you think. We're just blocking in where we see the darkest values the shadows and the stripes. And if we ever add a little too much or maybe not enough, we can always layer over top. This dries real quick. That's what's so lovely about acrylics and we can just layer over top our mistakes. Now I just wanna note what I did there. I added in more white to my mixture of yellow ochre and raw sienna because I just went overboard with my raw sienna. And although this is a dark value, it's still a light color because of how light this kitten is. So we're gonna make sure that we have a good amount of white in that mixture. Now we've applied our darkest values, let's get a little bit lighter with our medium values. I'm just pulling some of the paint we were just using and I'm gonna add in more white to it. And I'm basically gonna fill in majority of the leftover white we have on the kitten, aside from a lot of the really highlighted areas. Again, follow along and watch me where I'm blocking this in, but I'm very carefully working around the color that we just laid down for our darkest values. Now I know I do this pretty quick, but I'm pulling in white into this color, going to my highlights now, and I really wanna lighten these areas up for the next layer. So the paws are getting a lot of light. They're gonna be really light, almost white, but still with a little bit of tan in them. And behind the cat, along the outer edge of the ears and along the forehead and the side of the face, and the back, we're gonna see those real light highlights.
All right, so I'm going back to my liner brush or the very thin detail brush again because we're just going to fill in a real subtle shadow that we see on that left paw and along the left side of the jaw. And for this, we'll use a tiny, tiny amount of black with raw sienna. Again, not too much black like I did. It was a little too strong of a shadow. So I just use raw sienna and black, and I just filled that in the left side and above that left paw. Now you don't need much here, just a little amount, because we actually blend it in with our lighter colors that we've just applied to the kitten's fur, and we just blend that into these darker shadows. So I blend in white with raw sienna and yellow ochre, what we were using for that fur, and I just blend that in wet into wet. And I almost forgot about that little chin. That's gonna be our lighter value. It's not quite a highlight, but it's right there between our darkest value and our highlight. So it's gonna be a medium tan, and that's using yellow ochre, raw sienna, and white. Again, we don't wanna make it our lightest highlight like the paws, and we certainly don't wanna make it as dark as our stripes. It's right there in between. Now we're not done with our darkest values on the kitten. We can actually add some more contrast, go a little bit darker, we're using just raw sienna. I only have a small amount of raw sienna on my detail brush. And I'm just gonna get those shadows that I see on the left side of the face. You'll also notice in this step, I'm gonna start clustering lines together, especially on the left side of the face, to start creating that fur texture, making it more specific with each layer. Now for the next part, I'm not going to use the raw sienna, but I am going to go back to that yellow ochre, raw sienna, and white mixture to add a bit of a shadow around the lips. We see it below the top lips and to the left of the chin. I know we keep going back to this color, but again, we're gonna mix in more white into the yellow ochre, raw sienna, and white mixture. We're gonna make that real bright tan. And using a very thin, long bristled brush called a rigger brush, this really helps us to create those long lines like whiskers and to outline these ears with that highlight. Now we're not finished yet with this color because we can go around the kitty and do some touch-ups, making sure that we haven't added too much of our darker values around where it's supposed to be real light. And I'm also just gonna fine tune those tabby stripes with this color. Now just be careful because there's so few bristles and it's very easy to get a lot of paint on this brush. It can dry fast and create just real thick lines that we we don't want. So make sure you regularly wash out your brush, especially if you're adding too much paint. Dry it off in your cloth or paper towel and then pick up more paint.
Now I just want to add another stripe on that left arm. It's not actually in the photo, but I just feel like it makes sense to have a lighter stripe right there around that shadow. And so I'm just going to mix up a color that's just a bit darker than the very light tan we were just using. So I'm going to pull in some of that yellow ochre, raw sienna, and white again, but a little bit lighter than the darkest values that we applied. And I'm just going to create that stripe along that left paw. Alright, so wash out your brush thoroughly and dry it off. We're going to go in with just raw sienna and just define those little fingers on the paws. We don't need to make them long lines, but just to show where those little fingers are just really helps it look a little bit more realistic. And I just want to know the outlines that we added around the ears, they shouldn't be too thin that we can't see them from a distance. We should be able to see them, especially on that left ear that's kind of pointed downwards. We see a little bit more of the edge than we do on the right ear. So I'm just going to touch that up a little bit right now with my light tan. Next, we're going to apply the hair to the inner ear. We're again going to use the rigger brush but it's really hard to mix up colors with that. So I go in with a different brush and I just did that with a detail brush to mix up white and black just to make a light gray, so not much black. And then I pick up that color so that I can create these tiny little hair strands inside the ear. So if you notice, they're on the inside of the ears. So we're gonna start, I'm working on the right ear first and I'm actually starting on the left side of the right ear and then I pull these hairs over to the center and almost to the very edge of the right side of the ear. I know that's a lot. So if you just watch me just with one strand at a time and they start long at the bottom and then they actually get shorter towards the top. It's really important when you're using the rigger brush that you only apply just a tiny amount of paint to the tip of your brush, especially for small little hairs like this. You don't need to put paint on the entire brush, just the tip. And yes, you will have to keep going back to your paint to reapply. And yes, you will have to regularly wash out your brush just so that it doesn't get too sticky or tacky. But it is worth it and it really helps to create those real thin, fine hairs. Once I applied those hairs, I noticed that the inner ear was just a little too dark. It's really kind of an orange more than it is a dark red. So using a liner brush and cadmium yellow with a little bit of permanent red and some white, I very carefully went around those inner ear hairs that I just painted and applied more orange to the left and right sides of the ears. And we're still working on those ears because I can darken up the inner ear shadows. I'm just going to pull in just a little bit of black to the darkest areas, which is at the very bottom of both ears. And if you need to, in case that's just too dark, you can go back with some permanent red, raw sienna, and white with a little bit of cadmium yellow. And you can just touch that up wet into wet and even blend that into the ears just so it's not such an extreme dark with your light orange red. If that makes sense, you don't want it to be black against a bright orange. You kind of want it to have that natural progression from dark to light.
Now we can still use that gray that we used for the inner ear hair on the eye as the eye highlight. I like to start with a gray and then I'll build up towards a white. So that's what I'm going to do with my detail brush. I'm just going to apply a little bit of that gray and I'm going to add it to the upper right hand side of the eye where we see that little highlight. And then I'm going to go in and add some white over top that just to bring out that brightness and that small little highlight in the upper right hand side of the right eye. All right, are you ready to paint this basket? We're gonna use Burnt Sienna with Permanent Red, equal parts, and we're gonna work from bottom up. I'm working with a small round brush. I want a little thickness with these little wood pieces woven around the basket. We wanna start above the basket's base at the very bottom. And if you watch me, I'm gonna be layering starting from the very bottom, these half circles. They're just C's that are layered along the bottom in one row, and then we're gonna do another row over top that in between the gaps. Before you get started, I really recommend you watch me do two or three layers just so you understand the technique. It's repeating the same steps over and over again. Just make sure that when you do the next layer, it's right where those two C's join. My goal here is to stack these C's one layer after the other without covering up all the dark brown from the bottom. We're gonna build up layers from bottom up. We're just gonna work all the way up layer after layer. Now right here, about four or five layers up, I'm gonna pull in some yellow ochre into our reddish brown mixture. We're gonna get just a little bit lighter now.
All right, so now for even a little bit lighter, I'm gonna add in permanent red and yellow ochre. Again, we're just getting a little bit lighter because it's getting some sunlight hitting right at the center of the basket. All right, are your eyes cross-eyed yet? Just because we've done so many half C's, I know it's a little bit of a tedious process, but we're more than halfway done. I'm now gonna go darker, because we're getting a little bit of shadows created at the top of the basket. So what I'm gonna do is just pull in some burnt sienna into this paint mixture. So we're slowly gonna get darker now.
Now it's time to get even darker. We're gonna now pull in more permanent red and black. Just be careful not to add too much black because we still wanna be able to see this over top the dark brown base. All right, so now that we've reached the top of the basket, we're now gonna go and mix a different color for it. It's gonna be a bit lighter. I'm gonna mix up permanent red, raw sienna, and eventually I'll add in yellow ochre, but that'll be the color that we go with. And we're gonna create long strips, long lines, the same thickness as the half C's we made on the basket, just along the top, horizontally on the top of the basket. So you'll just watch me and I'll show you. Now I'm not making half C's, but I'm making these long lines horizontally along the top of the basket. All right, now I'm gonna make the lines a little bit curvier and looped over top the edge of the basket. I'm gonna make seven of these and they're gonna be, some are gonna be crisscrossing one another, some are gonna be by themselves. So get real creative with this. All right, so we're gonna take a break from the basket. We're not done with it yet, but we'll finish it after the next few steps. We're gonna work on the plants now, starting with the plant on the left. We're gonna create the stem using burnt sienna and raw sienna. I'm just mixing that up with my round detail brush now, but I will be using a longer rigor brush to create the thin line, the thin stem. I haven't used this brush yet, but it's really long bristles, really helps me to create long straight lines. This has got a curve in it though, so I'm gonna actually curve it out along the table to the far lower left of my canvas. Then coming out from that stem is just little leaf stalks that will attach to the leaves. I'll make them about an inch long on both the left and right sides of the stem. I'm gonna create two more stems, but they'll start from the very top of the basket, unlike where it was kind of folded behind the basket for the first one. And I'll also do the same thing with those leaf stalks that'll come out from the stem on both of them.
Now it's time to add our leaves. I didn't decide until later to add more plants on the right side of the kitten, so we're just gonna focus on the plant on the left side. I'm gonna mix up the colors phalo green, cadmium yellow, and a little bit of raw sienna. That's phalo green, raw sienna, and cad cadmium yellow. And I'm using a round detail brush, the one that I used to create the little half C's on the basket. And on the end of each little leaf stem, I'm gonna create leaves. Now you'll find no matter what paint you're using, this green will be a little transparent. We'll have to apply multiple layers. I had to apply about three or four layers of green over top my leaves, and you'll very likely have to do the same. And I find that adding just a little bit of raw sienna tends to help, especially heavy body paint. That's actually heavy body raw sienna that I'm using. And that acrylic paint, I'll use Master's Touch, my absolute favorite brand. And that seems to help thicken it up just a little bit. But for the future in this tutorial, we're just gonna let these leaves dry and then just apply more coats over top. And over time, you'll start to see that that's a really rich, vibrant green. Now, as you can tell, this is not in the reference photo. So we're gonna have to be creative in how we paint these leaves. You're welcome to look up your own reference photos, but I'm actually making my leaves resemble ivy leaves where they attach to the leaf stem, they're rounded on both sides, and then it comes to a point. Feel free to get real creative with your leaves or look up reference photos like I said. Maybe you wanna add fruit, maybe you wanna add more flowers to this stem, it's entirely up to you. As I move up the stems, I'm going to actually add in more yellow because it's getting a little bit more light than the area around the lower part of the table. So I want to make these leaves up here a lighter green just by adding more cadmium yellow.
I wasn't too fond of that gap on the lower left hand side of my canvas so I went ahead and created another stem and more leaves. But I made the leaves darker as well as that stem. I added a little bit of black to my burnt sienna to create that instead of the burnt sienna and raw sienna like we used for the other plants. And for the leaves, I added a little bit more raw sienna just to make those a little bit darker. They're not quite getting as much light as they are closer to the top where the kitten is. While we let our leaves dry so that we can go back and apply more layers of green, we're going to work again on the basket. I'm going to mix up the colors permanent red, raw sienna, yellow ochre, and white. That's permanent red, yellow ochre, raw sienna, and white. I came to find that using my rigger brush was a little bit easier than using a little thicker round detail brush, but that's entirely up to you. If you notice though, in the basket you have almost like little white spots, you have light pinks, you have deep reds, you have some browns in there. So I'm not going to be applying this color to every wooden piece on the basket. I want to focus mostly on where it's the lightest, which is around the center of the basket, and on the top edge. And also we want to add little dabs of white to this color, just a little bit of white, so that we can get those little specks that have been worn away. Now just remember, less is more here. You don't want to add too much of a light pink because we still want to keep this basket relatively dark. I'm barely mixing white into my red mixture. I'm almost having both colors just kind of do their thing on a few of the half C's that I'm choosing in the center of my basket. So I don't want too much white. I still want to keep it kind of light pink, but just have little specks of white still over those half C's that we've gone. So I'm choosing a few of those and not overdoing it. If in the case that you've added a little too much pink or red or even white, you can actually fix that just by mixing up some more black and burnt sienna and just going in between those half C's that we made and just touching up that base coat. 
we want those that shadow to be really obvious in between those C's. Now I want to pull out the highlights on the base of the basket. It's still a little too dark. We can pull out those highlights. I'll use burnt sienna and raw sienna for this. And we just want to get the edge of our base. So if you watch me, just with a little bit of this color, I'm going to be outlining those edges. Now in between those highlights, especially around the edges, I'll go in with just a little bit of black on my brush. I won't need much because I don't want to make it too strong, but I'll be pulling out those darks again right there. Now we're going to work on the plants on the right side of the kitten now. I'm actually using burnt sienna and black this time to create the stem and I'm just going to have that curl over the top of the right side of the basket. And with the same color and just like we did with the leaves on the left side, I'm just going to create these little stems that connect to the leaves that are about a half an inch to an inch long. Again, we'll mix up some phthalo green, cadmium yellow, and you can use a little bit of raw sienna in there just to help your color kind of stand out a little bit more. And we'll just be attaching those leaves to those tiny little stems. Next, to start working on the sunflowers, I'm just going to create the buds, the centers of the flowers. I'm going to make two using black and burnt sienna. I'm just going to create a circle that's kind of sticking out from behind the kitten, and then as well as kind of the side facing up. The one that I just made is actually facing upwards. I'm going to let that dry a little bit while we work on the petals. And for the petals, I'm going to be using yellow ochre, cadmium yellow, with a little bit of permanent red. I want to make a, a deep orange and we're just going to build up towards to a yellow. I'm going to lay down one petal at a time working around both the little buds we just made. If you pull in a little green into your petals, no worries. We're actually just going to really brighten up the colors one layer at a time. So right now we're just creating a base and laying down that structure of the sunflowers. As we wait for those sunflower petals to dry to brighten them up with our yellows and more oranges, I'm going to also brighten up the sky. It's completely dry and I can easily just wisp over some more white with sky blue to the background. I want to bring out the lightness in the sky, keeping the bottom of my background more of a deep blue and the top a little bit of a cloudy white color. I'm applying this with a medium flat brush, being careful not to go over the kitten, and as well as painting my sides. My 
my petals are tacky, which is just fine. Whether they're tacky or dry, we can still work on them. And I'm, I just applied cadmium yellow and orange to my paint palette. And using a small round detail brush, I'm gonna start layering color, just going from dark to light. This is a brighter orange than the base that we applied. I mixed up equal parts, cadmium yellow and orange, and I'm gonna be painting that over every single petal. And then we'll let that dry again and then go in with a little bit more yellow. I'm gonna pick up my rigger brush and I'm just gonna apply the tiniest amount of black to the tip of it. And we're gonna create two little birds. I'm barely applying any pressure, but I'm just creating two half C's connected to one another. It looks like a very curvy V. Just another way that we can show distance and depth to add these birds. We know that those are far away and that this kitten is up close. To make the basket look a little bit more three-dimensional, I'm just going to take permanent red and I'm going to extend these little wooden pieces that are woven around the basket out along the edges on both the left and right sides. All right, creatives, so we have gone over all the steps for this tutorial. Now it's touch-up time, where we repeat a lot of the same layers and colors and steps just to make it look like a complete painting. From here until the end, you'll watch me as I reapply a lot of my oranges, yellows, greens to the leaves, uh, anything that I need to touch up just to make my colors become more vibrant and rich in color. And I'll tell you, it took many layers to get those leaves really rich green, about three or four on all of them. So be patient and make sure you let each layer dry before applying more color. Now, when you're finished your painting, and if you feel comfortable, you're welcome to post it on the public YouTube community group linked down below on Facebook. You're also welcome to ask questions there or comment with them down below. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Bye.